All right, Ninja Nerds, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about prolactin. Okay, so if you guys remember from the hypothalamic pituitary axis video, we discussed what were the stimuli and what were some of the inhibiting factors for prolactin. We're gonna get into a little bit more detail on that and look at its effect on target organs. All right, so first off, what is the function of prolactin? Prolactin is designed to be able to promote what's called lactation, right, or milk production. So it's working on the actual mammary gland. So if you look here, we have a mammary gland, right? A mammary gland is really just a modified apocrine gland, which is a type of sweat gland, right? So it's a modified apocrine gland. And what it's designed to do is it's designed to be able to produce milk. If you look here at the actual mammary gland, you see these blue tube-like structures right there? These are called your lobules. And your lobules are consisting of these cells which are called your alveolar cells. And those alveolar cells are the cells that are making milk. And we'll zoom in on one and look at its action. If you look in between, there's all this interlobar connective tissue. And then uh, at the end of the interlobar connective tissue, there's these little ligaments called suspensory ligaments or Cooper's ligaments. And they anchor the breast to the actual posterior wall, right? So the pectoralis major and some of the actual tissue behind that. Then you got some superficial fascia, and you got these little tubes draining these actual glands here. What are these tubes here called? These tubes are called the lactiferous ducts. And then there's actually a dilation of the lactiferous ducts just behind the nipple, and that's called the lactiferous sinus. And then again, here's the nipple, and then there's a little bit of areola around that. Okay, so that's our mammary gland. And again, what does prolactin do? It's gonna stimulate these alveolar glands to start producing milk, and we'll take a look at that. Before we do that though, let's see what's the actual stimuli and inhibiting factors for prolactin. Okay, so if we look here, we have the hypothalamus, right? Okay, and then right here is gonna be your infundibulum, and then here's your posterior pituitary, and here's your anterior pituitary, right? Well, we had some cells before that we were talking about that release specific types of chemicals, right? So these two guys right here, are a group of neurons, right? So they we're gonna actually gonna call these as a group here. So let's say I actually group them together. These guys are a bunch of cell bodies that are collectively in together in the hypothalamus. They're called, specifically, the arcuate nucleus. Now the arcuate nucleus is a group of cell bodies in the central nervous system, right? And what happens is their axons come together and they actually secrete different types of chemicals. But one of the main chemicals that we're gonna look at here is actually gonna be called prolactin inhibiting hormone. And over here, what would be secreted over here? Prolactin inhibiting hormone. Now, prolactin inhibiting hormone, let's actually show that as a black dot here. So let's say there's the black dot right there, there's the black dot right there. I wanna define something before I keep going into showing this axis here. I wanna say something about prolactin inhibiting hormone. I know I mentioned it before, but you know there's actually another name that we can actually give prolactin inhibiting hormone? It's called dopamine. So dopamine is actually just another name for prolactin inhibiting hormone. Now. Prolactin inhibiting hormone does what? It circulates down through this actual portal system, the hypophyseal portal system, right? So let's show it actually circulating down through the hypophyseal portal system. Then what happens? It comes out of the hypophyseal portal system into the anterior pituitary. So when it gets out here into the anterior pituitary, look what's gonna happen. The prolactin is gonna come over and it's gonna act on these different types of receptors present on this cell. What is this cell here called? Lactotrope, or sometimes they even call them lactotrophs, right? But I'm gonna put lactotrope. What happens is this actual prolactin inhibiting hormone is gonna act on this receptor. And again, what's prolactin inhibiting hormone called? It's called dopamine. It actually acts on D2 receptors, but neither here nor there, what's the effect? it inhibits this cell from releasing prolactin. So prolactin won't be released. Okay, well that doesn't help me. How do I know what's gonna stimulate the release of prolactin? Okay, there is other nuclei in the vicinity here. So there actually is other nuclei here. One of them that we can take a look at here is actually called, look at this guy. He's got a mouth like no other, right? So what does he do? He secretes certain types of chemicals. What are these chemicals that he's secreting? He's secreting chemicals. For example, this one chemical that he secretes is actually called TRH. You might have heard of that before. Remember that from the thyroid hormone? It's called thyrotropin releasing hormone. This nucleus right here is called the para 
ventricular nucleus. And what does he do? He secretes thyrotropin releasing hormone. Guess what thyrotropin releasing hormone does? It can actually circulate down through the hypophyseal portal system and then it can come out, right? It can come out here into the anterior pituitary and it can bind onto some specific receptors present on this actual lactotrope. And look, it binds onto the lactotrope. And guess what kind of signals it gives to this lactotrope? It gives stimulatory signals, okay? That's another thing. Other things that can actually trigger this pathway besides thyrotropin releasing hormone, because we need to know all the things that are stimulatory and all the things that are inhibitory. So again, what's this inhibitory one here? This black dot right here? This is prolactin inhibiting hormone. And what's this red dot right here? This is called thyrotropin releasing hormone. He's one of the types of prolactin releasing hormones. What are some other things that can stimulate this prolactin release? Okay, so let's show him. He's giving the stimulatory signal. And now look what this guy's gonna do. He's gonna start uh, undergoing some specific types of transcription and translation, and look what he's gonna produce out of this. He's gonna produce prolactin, the hormone that we care about, right? So TRH is stimulating this pathway. What are some other things that can stimulate prolactin production? Because we need to know those. You know females, they, they usually have a lot of estrogen, right? So they make a lot of estrogen. Where do you make estrogen from? You make it from the ovaries, right? So when the estrogen is produced during the actual uh, pregnancy process and even actually during the birthing process and after the birthing process, what happens is estrogen levels are extremely important for prolactin production. So what does it do? Estrogen can actually stimulate prolactin production. But you know what else it can do? it can come over here and act on these neurons right here. You know the arcuate nucleus? It actually can come over here and look what it can do. It actually can inhibit the arcuate nucleus from producing prolactin inhibiting hormone. So what happens if you produce very little prolactin inhibiting hormone? Little prolactin inhibiting hormone is gonna have less of a negative effect on this lactotrope and it's gonna start producing prolactin. So there's two stimulatory effects of estrogen. One is it's gonna stimulate prolactin production directly as well as inhibit the release of dopamine, okay? There's other things that can also do this too. I'm just gonna mention uh, one more, and that is breastfeeding, okay? Because there's a lot of things that we could mention here, but we're just gonna mention the most significant and the most important ones. So breastfeeding also has a direct stimulus on prolactin production. Okay, so whenever there's the suckling of the baby, it can activate mechanoreceptors, and that can trigger the production of oxytocin, but it also can stimulate the production of, so it also, could, where else could it work here? The breastfeeding could also stimulate what? The paraventricular nucleus to release more thyrotropin releasing hormone. More, more thyrotropin releasing hormone will actually stimulate this lactotrope to make more prolactin. Okay, now we got that now. So we know what stimulates the release of prolactin, we know what inhibits the release of prolactin. Inhibitor, inhibitory, dopamine. Stimulatory is estrogen, breastfeeding, and thyrotropin releasing hormone. We're done, okay. Let's come over here to the mammary gland. In the mammary gland, like we said, there's a whole bunch of alveolar cells over here. And these alveolar cells are the ones that are making the milk. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on an alveolar cell and take a deeper look at how prolactin works. Okay. So if we look over here, prolactin is actually circulating in the blood now. So let's say here, this green dot right here is actually gonna be prolactin. And prolactin is being transported in the bloodstream, right? And what happens is this prolactin, so again, what is this chemical here called? Called prolactin. What will happen is prolactin will act on these alveolar cells, which are part of your mammary glands within your lobules, right? What is it gonna do? it's gonna act on these receptors, because this is an alveolar cell. So again, what is this cell here called? This is an alveolar cell, and it's one of the components of the lobules, right? So this is a component of the lobules. Now, what happens? Prolactin comes out of the bloodstream and activates some specific receptors that are present on this alveolar cell. We're not gonna go into detail on it, just remember, we'll cover this when we talked about the receptor pathway, but it activates what's called Jonas kinase, which is a jack, which then activates what's called STAT. And STAT is a signal transducer that activates transcription. Transcription for what? Multiple different types of things. So what is this gonna activate? It's gonna activate genes to make mRNA, 
And that mRNA is then going to get what? Translated into proteins via the ribosomes. And what are these proteins going to do? They can do so many different things. Some of these proteins might be milk proteins. So for example, we might actually do what? We might actually excrete these proteins out into the lumen. What kind of proteins could this be? This could be things like casein. This could be things like lactoferrin. A lot of different types of proteins, right? What else can it do? You know these proteins can also come over here and maybe phosphorylate specific types of channels. What type of channels? Maybe channels for certain types of uh, ions. So maybe this one could be for certain types of ions. So what could this one be for? Ions. Maybe this channel's for other different types of proteins. Let's say that this channel is opening up for uh, other different types of proteins. So let's say that this is like IgA antibodies or other different types of proteins, right? And let's say that this one is for uh, cholesterol. So let's say that this is a pathway for cholesterol or different types of lipids, right? And really they don't need a transport receptor. Uh, really cholesterol and lipid soluble substances don't really need a transporter because they can move through the membrane. I'm just showing it as with respect to the diagram. So again, what could be brought in? Ions. What else could be brought in? Certain types of immunoglobulins like IgA and certain types of proteins as well as cholesterol or different types of lipids as well as making your own proteins. And then what's gonna happen? All of these things are gonna get pushed out where? Out into the actual lumen, right? So again, what's this gonna come out here? IgA proteins and other different types of things and also a lot of lipids and cholesterol, okay? All right, so again, what are these chemicals that are gonna be present in the lumen? A lot of different types of ions and electrolytes, right? What else could be present here? Bunch of different types of proteins. What kind of proteins? We could have things like casein or renin or lactoferrin, right? What else could you have? You could also have other different types of proteins like IgA antibodies or as well as plasma proteins that you filtered out, right? Okay, what else could you have? You could also have a lot of different types of lipids and cholesterol, right? So we could also have a lot of different types of lipids and cholesterol as well as vitamins. There's so many different things that are present within the actual milk that it's, it would take forever to go through all of them, okay? But just know that basically that's what it's doing. It's stimulating the production of a whole bunch of different types of proteins. Some of the proteins are gonna be direct milk proteins. Other things are gonna activate certain types of channels or other different types of pathways to bring in substances from the plasma, right? Like IgA antibodies or certain types of ions or cholesterol or vitamins or minerals, all these different types of things to provide nutrient support to the baby. Okay, now that we know that, we know what? What have we been able to accomplish throughout this whole thing here? We've been able to say, what is the stimulus for prolactin production? What is it? What are the three stimuli for prolactin production? So again, if I were to kind of highlight here the big ones, we'd say estrogen is a very powerful stimulus. What else did we say? We also said breastfeeding is a very powerful stimulus. And what else did we say? We also said thyrotropin releasing hormone is a very positive stimulus. So all of these things are stimulating what? Prolactin production. What are the things that are inhibiting prolactin production? This would be dopamine. Okay, so dopamine is a very, very powerful inhibitor of prolactin production. Oh, one more thing that I wanna mention here and that's gonna finish up our video here, guys. Let's come back over here for a second here. Um, I remember I told you that estrogen is a very strong stimulator, right? Well, estrogen is a stimulator of prolactin production, but when estrogen is produced, right, after the actual birthing process, the estrogen levels drop a little bit. And as the estrogen levels drop a little bit, what happens is, because normally, like let's imagine here's this receptor, right? Estrogen is gonna work through different types of pathways to inhibit the action of prolactin on this alveolar cell. So even though prolactin levels can be high, it won't be able to exert its effects inside of the cell. Because why? The reason why this wouldn't happen is because of extremely high estrogen levels. So with extremely high estrogen levels, it can stimulate prolactin production, but inhibit the action of prolactin on the alveolar cells. So what has to happen is, is after, after the birthing process, the estrogen levels start coming down a little bit, coming down a little bit, coming down a little bit, and then what happens? Then prolactin can act on the, specifically the alveolar cells to produce all the different types of things that we need for milk production.